topic today would be properties of LC driving point functions that is networks containing only inductors and capacitors and their synthesis that is given an LC driving point function how to determine the network. We had started this discussion on the in the 40th lecture or the 39th I think. And we argued that if a network contains only LC elements, then the input impedance, the real part, if this is Z of S, the real part of Z of J omega should be equal to 0 because there is no power that is dissipated in the network. And from this we concluded that if Z of S is written as M1 plus N1 divided by M2 plus N2, then M1, M2 minus N1, N2 has to be equal to 0 and the only way, only two alternative ways that can be, that can be satisfied is either M1 equal to 0 and N2 equal to 0, both terms should be individually 0 or M2 or M2 equal to 0 and N1 equal to 0, which means that the input impedance that is Z of S shall be a ratio of even to odd polynomial or odd to even polynomial. That is the only possibilities are that Z of S would be equal to N1 by M2 or M1 by N2. It should be a ratio of even to odd or even to or odd to even polynomial. And such a rational function is called an odd rational function, odd rational function, a ratio of even polynomial to odd polynomial or odd polynomial to even polynomial is called an odd rational function. And if the uh, function is odd, then naturally and uh, since Z of S is positive real, it has to be positive real otherwise we, uh, we cannot realize this. If it is to be positive real then obviously the numerator as well as the denominator must be Harwitz. That means they cannot have roots in the right half plane. Similarly here also the numerator and denominator both have to be Harwitz and if they are Harwitz, Harwitz and even polynomial or Harwitz and odd polynomial <coughs> naturally the roots must occur on the J omega axis. That means we conclude that poles and zeros of LC driving point functions shall all be on the J omega axis. And if there are poles on the J omega axis or zeros on the J omega axis, you know that for the function to be positive real, these poles and zeros must be simple. And considering the poles, the residues at these poles shall be real and positive. Okay. No, no, we are not saying that. We are saying that both N1 <coughs> and M1, both N1 and M2 have to be hurried because Z of S is positive real, it cannot have poles or zeros in the right of plane. Okay? And since this is purely odd or purely even, it must have zeros on the G omega axis. It cannot be anywhere else. If at all. If at well, it must have zeros at poles. Okay, a polynomial of degree two must have two roots. Okay, so it must have zeros. It must have poles, and these poles and zeros must be on the G omega axis. All right. Now, one of the consequences is of this uh, derivation is that the degrees cannot be equal by definition. The degree of an odd polynomial cannot be equal to the degree of an even polynomial. All right, even and odd they are of different characters, they cannot be equal, the degrees cannot be equal. If the degrees cannot be equal, they can differ only by 1. They cannot differ by 0 because the degrees cannot be equal and therefore the numerator and denominator of an LC driving point function, what we are speaking about uh, impedance is also applicable to admittance because reciprocal of an impedance, <coughs> reciprocal of an FPR function is PR. All right. So, uh, if for a driving point function of an LC network, 
the degrees must differ by 1. The degrees of the numerator and denominator must differ by 1. And if the degrees differ by 1, it follows that the function must have either a pole or a 0 at infinity. Pole or 0 at infinity. This is a must, okay, because the degrees differ by 1. If the denominator degree is 1 greater than the numerator degree, then it is a 0 at infinity. If it is the other way around, then it is a pole at infinity. It also follows, it also follows that because it is odd to even or even to odd, it also follows that S equal to 0 belongs to the same category. That means at S equal to 0, the function must have either a 0 or a pole. This one for example shall have a 0 at the origin because the numerator is odd and any odd polynomial is S times an even polynomial. Therefore, it must be 0 at S equal to 0 where if it is this form then it must have a pole. Therefore, there must be a pole or 0 at S equal to 0 also all right. That means the pole I am sorry the, the point at S equal to 0 origin and the point at infinity both of them are critical frequencies critical because the function must either vanish there or it must blow up there. either the function vanishes or its reciprocal vanishes. So, they are two critical frequencies in general all poles and zeros are also referred to by the same phrase namely critical frequency a critical frequency is a frequency at which the either the function blows up or its reciprocal blows up all right. So, uh, both the points at the origin and infinity are critical frequencies for an LC function. Let us take a specific case let us say z of s equal to uh, to be specific let us say it is uh, m 1 by m 2 in other words it is a ratio of an even polynomial to an odd polynomial. The next question that one asks is uh, I know that m 1 has to be of the form a 0 plus a 2 s squared plus a 4 s 4 and so on. m 1 has to be of this form and n 2 has to be of the form b 1 s it cannot have a constant term b 1 s plus b 3 s cubed and so on. Let us write another b 5 s 5 and so on. The highest power here if it is 8 then the highest power here shall be either 7 or 9 ok agree. The question that one asks is between a 0 and let us say uh, a 8 let us say it is a 8 and let us say this is b 9 s to the 9 between a 0 and a 8 can there be a missing power? No. What? Obviously, all odd powers are missing, but in an even polynomial, in an even polynomial, it is on the even powers of S that should be present. Can there be a coefficient which is missing? No, because an even polynomial, even Hurwitz polynomial, must have all its roots on the g omega axis. That means it must be product of terms like this, this S squared plus omega I squared. And if you multiply terms like this, all even powers shall be present. There cannot be a missing term. Missing term means there is cancellation and therefore, there must be negative signs in the factors all right. If we do not allow that obviously, no missing powers in m 1 by in by a similar token no missing powers in n 2 ok. So, no missing powers in numerator or denominator in numerator or denominator ok no missing powers. <clears throat> On the basis of this discussion we have not uh, we have not exhausted the properties we have discussed some properties, but on the basis of this discussion it follows that a, an LC impedance function must be of this particular form that is it can have a multiplying constant k then it can have let us say a 0 at the, a pole at the origin it can have it may not have ok. It can have a z a pole at the origin then the next 
critic oh that we have not discussed so far but let us say the numerator the denominator must be of this form s squared plus omega 2 squared s squared plus omega 4 squared and so on all right the the numerator <coughs> the numerator then must be of the form s squared plus omega 1 squared s squared plus omega 3 squared and so on. Now, there is a specific way I have written this all the denominator uh, poles I have written with even subscripts all the numerator zeros I have written with odd subscripts there is a significance which will come to a little later, but you you um, shall agree with me that z of s must be of this form that is some k multiplied by let us say n of s by d of s where both n and d are written with leading coefficient equal to unity all right it also follows that the degree of n must be either one greater than degree of d or one less than degree of d to be specific let us say that the degree of n is equal to degree of d plus 1 then this function has a pole at infinity is that okay if the degree of n is 1 greater than the degree of t then the function has a pole at infinity all right so the z of s that we have taken has a pole has a pole we have taken only an example has a pole at s equal to 0 all right what was the question is there a question at s equal to 0 then 1 at s equal to infinity and at points on the g omega axis in between that is between s equal to 0 and s equal to infinity there are other frequencies at which it vanishes that is at plus minus j omega 2 plus minus j omega 4 and so on there is a pole s equal s occurs in the denominator so at s equal to 0 the function blows up it becomes infinity. Why? I can have another term here and I can terminate this here. Can I now? I can have s square plus omega 5 squared here and this n set omega 4. Then the degree of the denominator would have been 5 and the degree of the numerator would have been 6 that is a dot dot means it is continued we are not taking a specific case, but here we have said if the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the denominator then the function has a pole at infinity. What we are going to say now is uh, yeah. degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the denominator then should we have a 0 at s is equal to 0? No, put s equal to 0 here. You see this is omega 1 squared, this is omega 3 squared, omega 2 squared, omega 4 squared. So, this will all be constants. It is this s which will cause the function so, so to be. No, not necessary because s could occur in the numerator. If it occurs in the numerator, then the function has a 0 at the origin. So, that means both s equal to 0 and infinity will blow up the function? No, not necessary. You can have a 0 at the origin and a pole at infinity. So, in this case, I have not specified all I have specified is that there is an s in the denominator and that the numerator degree is 1 greater let us yeah. be specific let us say s squared plus omega 5 squared this is creating confusion this is a perfectly valid LC function right this is purely even this is purely odd the numerator degree differs from the denominator degree by 1 numerator degree is 1 greater and therefore there is a pole at infinity put s equal to 0 here the value is infinity and therefore it has a pole at the origin it has a pole at infinity and it has two poles at plus minus two pairs of poles plus minus j omega 2 and plus minus j omega 4 agree let us consider this in a little more detail now let us uh, <coughs> let us generalize this let us say we have s squared plus omega 1 squared s squared plus omega 3 squared etc up to let us say s squared plus omega mm, 
2n minus 1 square, uh, no, 2n plus 1 square, let us say, and in the denominator we have s times s squared plus omega 2 squared and so on up to s squared plus omega 2n squared, alright. Let us generalize this. Then we are we have made sure that the numerator degree is one greater than the denominator degree and because the denominator is odd it has a pole at infinity and it has pairs of poles at plus minus g omega 2 plus minus g omega 4 plus minus j omega 2 n and so on. Okay? Now we also know that z of s is pi and therefore if it is positive real its poles on the j omega axis must be simple which we have taken care of, none of them are multiple and the residues there must be real and positive. In other words, if I make a partial fraction expansion of this, then I should get terms like k0 by s plus, plus k2 s divided by s squared plus omega 2 squared. All right. Actually, I should have written twice k2. If I write in this form, then the residue is k2 by 2. Do not forget this. Okay. Instead of writing 2k2, I prefer to write k2. Okay. Plus k4s divided by s squared plus omega 4 squared, and so on, so on. Plus k2ns divided by s squared. Do not forget this s. If this s is not there, the function will be non-pr. Okay. Okay. So s squared plus omega two n squared. Then finally, I must have, I must take care of the pole at infinity. That would be, let's say, let the residue there be k infinity, then k infinity s. Agree? The pole. The, the, we assume that the function has a pole at infinity. <coughs> All right. Therefore, k infinity s must come. There is a difference between the characters of k0, k infinity, k2, k4, k2n. While k0 and k infinity are truly residues, k2, k4, k2n are not residues. They are twice the residues. Okay. One must remember this. How do you find out k0, k2, etc.? k0 is obvious k0 is you simply put s equal to 0 then k times omega 1 squared omega 3 squared omega 2 n plus 1 whole squared divided by omega 2 squared etc up to omega 2 n squared. So, k0 is obvious k infinity is also obvious what is k infinity in this form simply equal to k is not that right because at infinity the leading power here leading coefficient is 1. So, this tends to s to the power m, this tends to s to the power m plus 1 <coughs> and therefore, k infinity is simply equal to k. To find out the other residues, for example, k2, what you do is multiply the function by s squared plus omega 2 squared, multiply the function by this and divide by s all right, and put s squared equal to minus omega 2 squared and so on for all other residues. This is no, this is twice, twice the residue. Okay, this is twice the residue. All right, I can write the other terms also like this. K0 for example is s times z of s with s equal to 0. This is truly a residue. K infinity is z of s divided by s with s equal to infinity. These are general formulas, but k0 and k infinity should be obvious by inspection, whereas k2, k4, etc. may require some amount of calculation. But you see, this calculation is not difficult because we are only handling real numbers. We are not putting s equal to plus j omega or minus j. We are putting s squared equal to minus omega 2 squared. And what <coughs> Why are you? Why is one so sure that one will handle only real numbers? Because we are dividing by s, therefore we will get an even polynomial divided by an even polynomial, and put s squared equal to minus omega squared. All right? Okay. By um, the hypothesis that z of s is positive real, k 
k0, k2, k4, k2 and k infinity they must all be real and positive alright. Now I also claim uh, give me your ears I also claim that this is the most general form of an LC driving point impedance this is the most general form. Well how, how can it differ how can another LC driving point impedance differ from this in character the only difference will be that instead of a pole at infinity it has a zero well if the function if there is a function which has a zero at infinity all that that will happen is k infinity shall be equal to zero all right so the, in this general form if you put k infinity equal to zero you get a zero at infinity isn't that right if k infinity is zero and you put s equal to infinity here the whole the rest of the function is zero agree in a similar manner in a similar manner if the function has a 0 at the origin all that will happen is k0 shall be equal to 0. Now put this term away and look at the rest of it at s equal to 0 this is a 0 and therefore I claim that this is the most general form of partial fraction expansion of an LC impedance and what I have said about impedance is also true about admittance and therefore in general LC DPI one must be able to express it in this form. This is the most general partial fraction expansion of an LC DPI driving point emittance it could be impedance or it could be admittance. Is the point clear the most general form. <coughs> what was the logic? only deviations that can occur are that instead of a pole at infinity there can be a 0 at infinity instead of a pole at the origin there can be a 0 at the origin or a combination of them how many combinations are possible 4 because for each of them there are two possibilities so 0 at infinity 0 at the origin 0 at infinity pole at the origin pole at infinity 0 at the origin pole at infinity pole at the origin there only there are 4 cases and all cases are covered by this partial fraction expansion all right okay if this point is clear then we be let us be a little more specific and let us say we are considering an impedance there is no loss of generality because we shall show what happens if we consider an admittance for an LC impedance the most general form is k0 by s plus summation <coughs> kis divided by s squared plus omega i squared let us say okay forget about those even subscription odd subscript these are the poles let us say if there are n number of poles i equal to 1 to n plus k infinity s a common sense question <laughs> i said n number of poles is that correct it has this function has n plus 2 poles because there is one at the origin one at infinity. Now these poles the poles at origin and infinity poles are zeros the two points origin and infinity they are considered as external points external this is just a nomenclature they are considered as external points. In other words this function has two external poles okay or external every LC function for every LC function the origin and infinity they must be critical frequencies both of them can be poles both of them can be zeros one can be zero one can be a pole there are four such possibilities but we say or nomenclature is just a nomenclature just a language that both origin and infinity are critical <coughs> frequencies and they are external critical frequencies. If these two poles are external poles obviously these you should call internal poles. So there are n number of internal poles and two external poles okay this is just a business of nomenclature the textbooks use it so I am also obliged to use it there is no other significance to this uh, terminology. Now if we consider the value of this function as I said this is the most general form 
of the LC impedance function. If I consider the value on the g omega axis z of g omega. Now since it is an LC driving point function <coughs> its real part should be equal to 0 or which is indeed brought out you see that z of g omega uh, is equal to k0 by j omega which is minus j k0 by omega all right <coughs> plus summation i equal to 1 to n <coughs> we shall have ki j omega divided by omega i squared minus omega squared plus j k infinity omega okay as you see each term is imaginary each term is imaginary as it should be there is no other way because it is LC there is no real part resistive part is 0 it absorbs no power and therefore it must be purely imaginary the imaginary the real part of Z of j omega is 0 the imaginary part as you know is called the reactance of this impedance. So if I put this as j times x of omega then capital X is the reactance reactance of the LC network reactance the imaginary part of the impedance function on the j omega axis is the reactance and you see that capital X of omega is simply minus k0 by omega plus summation ki omega divided by omega i squared minus omega squared plus k infinity omega all right okay is that okay all right now let us look at this a little more closely I repeat this here x omega is minus k0 by omega plus summation k i omega divided by omega i squared minus omega squared plus k infinity omega. Suppose I differentiate this with respect to omega. <coughs> I take the differential coefficient. Now you must understand one thing that x of omega as far as the points of blowing up is concerned we can't say we can't say x of omega has poles okay z of s had poles x of omega blows up at the same points as z of s that is x of omega blows up at omega equal to 0 at omega equal to infinity and omega equal to plus minus <coughs> omega I, okay and loosely we call them poles of x of omega. So we say x of omega has poles at omega equal to 0, omega equal to infinity and omega equal to plus minus omega i all right <coughs> just a matter of terminology. <coughs> but as far as this differential coefficient is concerned <coughs> you notice that the first term shall give you k0 by omega square, the last term shall give you simply k infinity and each term in this if you carry out the differentiation it would be <coughs> k i omega square plus omega 2 squared divided by omega i squared minus omega squared whole squared. I leave the algebra to you. You can show very easily that the oh I am sorry it should be i. <coughs> let me correct it omega square plus omega i square divided by omega i square minus omega square whole square. If you look at this if you look at the individual terms you see that each of them you see k0 ki k infinity they are real and positive omega squared can never be negative omega squared plus omega i squared is also positive this whole square omega i squared minus omega squared whole squared is also positive k infinity is a positive quantity and therefore this must be strictly positive. This is a the most important property of LC driving point impedance that the reactance function slope of the reactance function is always positive can it be equal to 0. No. Be, why not? 
if all the residues are 0, if all residues are 0, the function is identically equal to 0. zero. Therefore, <coughs> therefore, it is a trivial case and we did not consider this. Therefore, we conclude that dx d omega that is the slope of the reactance function must be strictly positive. Now, this creates problems and it also offers solutions. The problem is the following. Let us take this function, a typical function let us say k i omega divided by omega i squared minus omega squared. Let us take a typical term inside the summation. <coughs> I repeat this k i omega divided by omega i squared minus omega squared. And let us say we are interested in plotting capital X of omega versus omega and omega i is somewhere here. <coughs> omega i is somewhere here and you see at omega equal to omega i the function blows up and therefore it is a pole and you know poles are denoted by crosses. So, let us say this is omega i. On the negative side of course, there is a minus omega at which also uh, it is uh, it blows up, but we show only the positive sign from 0 to infinity. Now, if omega is less than omega i that is on this side, if omega is less than omega i obviously the function is positive okay? and omega greater than omega i the function is negative. All right. so, um, but at omega equal to omega i it blows up and therefore at omega equal to omega i there must be a discontinuity a discontinuity you see at omega equal to omega i minus the function is plus infinity right <coughs> at omega equal to omega i plus the function is minus infinity and therefore if we sketch this function it must go to infinity like this with a positive slope the slope has always to be positive and it must come up like this at omega i omega i plus is this point clear that at omega equal to omega i the, the function has a discontinuity it goes from plus infinity to minus infinity can it be otherwise can it come from minus infinity can it be minus infinity here at omega no <coughs> all right therefore suppose we have a function which has a pole at infinity pole at origin pole at origin all right then and we want to plot x of omega the slope is strictly positive there is a pole at the origin there is a pole at infinity which we show by means of a break and let us say point infinity here this is origin this is infinity. Okay. Now <coughs> how should the function how should the function come from 0 from minus infinity why okay. can can it go like this from minus infinity it must rise, but then what should it can it can it go to another infinity before passing through a 0 no therefore the next critical frequency starting from the origin must be a 0 okay? must be a 0 it must cross 0 and then must go to infinity at the next pole at the next pole it must go to infinity like this which means that this will be a point <coughs> this will be a pole this will be a pole and this would be a 0 agree next suppose next it must rise from so minus so infinity yes so why can't the coefficient otherwise other way around this? oh because the slope dx d omega has always to be strictly positive would be positive so if it goes this way continues this way continues this, sir, this way oh like this, yes, sir. this no that's what i have done <laughs> now making it a shape thing you oh the curvature like this yes, sir. wow yes 
uh, in theory yes, but uh, <coughs> the curves if you plot it the curves are <coughs> like the tangent curve, like the curves of tangent theta versus theta ok. The curvature is like this, it, it just happens. It could be other way around for another type of network alright, I do not we do not know. Now similarly the curve now must rise from minus infinity with a break here and the next critical frequency must be a 0 ok, must be a 0 and it goes to the next critical frequency. So, this is a 0 and this is a pole, the next one is a pole. The, the <coughs> infinity point is also a pole ok. Now, suppose what can there be in between, between this pole and this pole there must be a 0, at least one 0 ok. Let this 0 be here, then obviously the curve goes like this and then there is a break and it goes like this. This is a typical plot of the reactance function that is capital X versus omega and this is called a reactance sketch, reactance sketch. There are three other possible cases, three other possible cases depending on whether the origin is a is a pole or a 0 and the infinity is a pole or a 0 and I leave the rest of the sketching to you. It would be fun. For example, if the origin is a 0, the next critical frequency must be a pole and it rises like this. If the infinity point was a 0 instead of a pole, then it must come like this and go to 0 at infinity ok. <coughs> so, the three other possible sketches I leave it to you and in each case you can verify that poles and zeros must alternate must alternate. This is a reflection of the positiveness of the slope property. Therefore, for an LC driving point impedance function we conclude that poles and zeros must there is a there is a there is a poetic word for it instead of alternate must interlace <coughs> is slightly better used by English poets uh, quite a bit ok. Poles and zeros of an LC driving point function must interlace and what we have said so far about impedance function should also be true for admittance function that is <coughs> if I write an y of s and then an y of j omega y of j omega should also be purely imaginary. So, we write this as j times b of omega where b what is the name for b? There is a name for b, susceptance, oh, you do not know about this? Susceptance y of j omega is the real part is capital G which is conductance and the imaginary part is capital G happens to be 0 here because it is an LC network. So, on the j omega axis the admittance is purely imaginary and the imaginary part is known as susceptance and by the same argument we can show that d b omega d omega also has to be strictly greater than 0, strictly positive. Both slopes are strictly positive. <coughs> Let us take, analysis. yes, in fact it is the same analysis, there is no same analysis, there is no difference, same analysis. Let us take a few examples. Suppose we have a function k s, s square plus 4 divided by s square plus 1, s square plus 3, is it L c? Can it be L c? The answer is no. <laughs> this is 0 at the origin, pole at square root of 1, then there is a pole at square root of 3. So, two poles come adjacent to each other. So, this is not LC. Okay. Poles and zeros must interlace. There is a 0 at the origin, S equal to 0. The next is a pole at 1. Next is also a pole at root 3, 
root 3 is 1.732 which is less than root 4 and therefore there are two poles adjacent to each other so this cannot qualify as an LC function. Let us take another k times let us say s square plus <coughs> 1 s square plus 9 divided by s square plus 2 s square plus 10. Both even it is not an odd function and therefore this cannot be an LC. Can you bring an S somewhere so that it becomes LC? Where should S be? Denominator. All right. Next question. This is not trivial. I have I don't show the poles. I have S five. Pardon me. That's right. S has to be in the denominator. Otherwise, they would not interlace. Now I don't show the poles directly. I S five plus four S cube plus 5s <coughs> divided by 3s to the 4 plus 6s squared. <coughs> How do I test whether this is LC or not? <coughs> well, you see the, the it is not the function can you cannot make a judgment by looking at the function because it is not in this in the lowest order. You see there is an S, there is a factor of S cancelling from numerator and denominator. So before making any conclusion, do not make a conclusion that it has a double order pole at the origin. Obviously if you look at this function, it has a double order because of S square, but there is an S in the numerator. So first you write it in this form, in the lowest form, that is in a form in which the numerator and denominator, what is the mathematical term? numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial have no common factors. What are such polynomials called? No. Another guess. Not proper. Nothing is improper. <laughs> they are primes with respect to each other. All right. Three, two numbers, let us say 3 and 21, they are not primes with respect to each other. But 3 and 7 are primes with respect to each other. 3 and 8 are prime. Similarly, with respect to a polynomial, if two polynomials have no common factors, they are said to be primes with respect to each other. So, I reduce this to primes 4s square plus 5 divided by 3s cubed plus 6s. I can write this as 3s times s square plus 2. Okay. Now, the question does it qualify as an LC? You see the numerator is an even polynomial, the denominator is purely odd, the poles are on the j omega axis, one at the origin, one at plus minus j root 2, one pair and there is a pole at infinity. So almost everything is satisfied. Pole at infinity because s to the 4 and s cube, okay. but <coughs> the problem comes here and you see this is obviously this is obviously Harvey, there is no missing term, but even then alas the zeros are not on the g omega axis. You see the zeros are at minus 4 plus minus 16 minus 20 divided by 2. So these are not on the g omega axis. The zeros are complex at complex values of s squared. Therefore this does not qualify as an LC function. <coughs> All right. So, one must be careful. This, this had all the ingredients of qualifying for an LC function, but uh, unfortunately it is not. Now, let us go back to the most general partial fraction expansion of an LC function. What we had was k0 by s plus, let us take a specific case, let us say k2 s divided by s squared plus omega 2 squared plus let us say k 4 s divided by s squared plus omega 4 squared and let us say we have k infinity s, a specific case. Okay. Now how many specs are there in this function, in this expression how many specifications are there? What is the total number of uh, data or information that is to be supplied to specify this function. Obviously, six. six. 
What are these six? K0, K2, K4, K infinity, omega 2 and omega 4. And if we can synthesize this with six elements and no more, that would be the best. You cannot hope to synthesize with less than six because there are six pieces of information. You require six independent elements. All right. You might be able to do it with more than six. More than six is no problem. You have more money, you put uh, instead of a 100 inductor, you put 0.5 and 0.5 in series. So, what is the justification in saying that there are six constants and we need six? Elements? Oh, there are six constants K0, K2, K4, K infinity, and you change any of them, obviously the network shall differ. So, what six elements and six constants? For Which satisfying six specs, we require at least six elements at least six different values are needed and such a synthesis is given the name of canonic, canonic synthesis. Canonic is given the network function, the number of pieces of information required to specify it. If the number of elements is exactly equal to that, then it is called canonic. And the synthesis should be obvious. Suppose f of s is an impedance. <coughs> if f of s is an impedance, then obviously it has been put, the partial fraction expansion puts the impedance function as a sum of 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. And each term, each term the synthesis is obvious. The first one for example is a capacitor 1 by k naught, that is correct. The Next one obviously is a parallel connection of an inductor and a capacitor. Similarly, the next one is also an inductor and capacitor. And finally, we have an inductor, k infinity. Let us see the element values. What is this element value? k2 by, k2 by omega 2 squared and this one? 1 by k2. That is correct. Do you see how we did this? No? Well, we wrote k2 s by s, we wrote this as 1 by s by k2 plus omega 2 squared by k2 s. And if this is an impedance, obviously the denominator is an admittance. So, it is s c plus 1 over SL, SC, C must be 1 by K2 and L must be K2 by omega 2 square. Is that clear? Similarly, this would be 1 by K4 and this must be K4 by omega 4 square. And you see that we require exactly 6 elements. All right. If F of S was an admittance, if F of S was an admittance, F of S is Y of S, then obviously all these elements should come in parallel and K0 by S will now represent an inductor of value 1 over K0. And each partial fraction term that is K2 S by S squared plus omega 2 squared, if this is to be an admittance then obviously it is a series connection of L and C. So, it is k2 omega 2 squared by k2 s and therefore, what we have is an L and a C in series and <coughs> the value of the inductor will now be 1 by k2 and this will be k2 by omega 2 square. The next one would be similarly 1 by k4 and k4 by omega 4 square. Finally, we shall have a capacitor of value k infinity. And if you compare these two networks, if you compare, is the whole thing on the screen? Yeah. If you compare these two networks, you see that they are exact duals of each other. This is a series network, this is a parallel. Wherever there is a parallel connection, there is a series connection. This is impedance, this is admittance. 
and the element values <coughs> are also duals of each other. 1 by k0 is the value of a capacitor here, this is the value of an inductor here. Okay. k infinity is an inductor, k infinity is a capacitor. Similarly, these inductors and capacitors also interchange, so they are exact duals of each other. And this synthesis of an LC impedance was first given by a gentleman by the name R. M. Foster, Ronald M. Foster. I have not heard about his death and I believe he is still alive. This was given in 1924, more than 70 years ago. The man must now be more than 100. So he must be, he is alive. He used to work with in the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and this was part of his PhD thesis. And this synthesis, this synthesis which gives the synthesis in terms of a series connection or a parallel connection, they are known as Foster forms, Foster forms and the series connection sometimes is called Foster 1 and the second the parallel connection is called Foster 2, Foster 1 and Foster 2. It also incidentally, <coughs> incidentally makes a limited verification of the statement that we made at the beginning that if a synthesis problem has one solution, it has indefinite number. At least we have got two. The other <coughs> form, uh, you see that in the, in the second form also, Foster 2 is also canonic. So, these are two canonic forms of synthesis due to Foster. There, there exist another two basic canonic forms which are due to a German by the name Wilhelm Kauer. Unlike Foster, Kauer is dead long ago. Kauer died during the Second World War by, he died at the hands of Nazis. He must have been a Jew. I am not sure, do not take my words for it. But during the Second World War, the only thing that is known is that after the Second World War was over, you see, during the Second World War, there was intense activity in electrical engineering, particularly circuits, circuit theory, intense activity because telephone communication was on the anvil <coughs> and people needed filters, people needed filters to separate speech from noise and things like that. There was intense activity throughout the West, uh, UK, United States, Germany and the whole of Europe. And this gentleman working in Germany, he derived independently of anybody else, independent of Foster. He did not know the existence of Foster. Similarly, Foster did not know the existence of Kawa. He wrote a, a book, in those days it used to be called a treatise or something, a thick book called Synthesis of Linear Communication Networks. It was written in German and the manuscript was discovered only after the world war was over. And they found that there is a beautiful synthesis of many kinds of networks including the simplest the LC network. LC network synthesis in fact is one of the simplest synthesis problems. Okay, And those two forms are known as Kawar forms. Very simple minded logic but they are a, a testimony to the uh, brilliant mind that Wilhelm Kawar had. And the western world uh, it required quite a bit of time for the English speaking world to discover the work of Kawar as late as uh, as the end of uh, beginning of 50 or maybe end of 40s that the English speaking world discovered this and then they translated this. The book is available, it is a thick book, one copy is available in the library and these are called, Kawar also gave two forms, <coughs> Kawar 1 and Kawar 2. He did not call them Kawar 1 and Kawar 2, he simply said I can synthesize in this form. Unfortunately, he did not discover the Foster form. He discovered cover 1 and cover 2 and both of these are in the form of a ladder. It is a beautiful synthesis. Cover 1 for example is series inductance and shunt capacitance. This is not a pure series connection or pure parallel connection. And cover 2 is series capacitor and shunt inductance. It is of this form. 
And these are the two forms that we shall discuss tomorrow at 5 p.m. here.